Hey guys, we have a new attribute in Geometry Nodes. This is brand new, so you have to download the latest Blender 2.93 Alpha, um, and then you can use it. And it is the Vertex Normals and Normals. How about we just jump right into Blender and check it all out? Okay, so this is my startup file. Let me just clean this up a little bit. What do we need? We need uh, this. Okay, so let's take the sphere again because it's there. And then we go down here to geometry nodes. We can create a new node tree. I switched on the cursor highlighter. Okay, so if you go shift a attribute and we just plug something in here, you can now see that we have a vertex normals uh, in here, which is new. We can use that to, first of all, you could use it to displace geometry. So if you have the normal and you want to move uh, vertices out along the normal, if you want to blow up this sphere, uh, for example, <laughs> you could use the normals to scale uh, the geometry, right? But we can also do something else. We can put uh, objects onto this geometry and then um, move them so that they're on top of the surface. Let me just show you what I mean. So for example, I create a, how about I create an icosphere, okay? Move it to the side. Go back here and plug this in here. And then we go point distribute, some points. Then we go point scale, uh, Factor vector, make them smaller, point 0.1. And then we go point instance, and we're gonna eyedropper the icosphere. So now we have the icospheres where the geometry used to be. So how can we get our original geometry back? You can always do geometry join, and then plug that in here. So we're adding the icospheres to our original geometry. Now, when you look at this, you can see that the center of this, or the origin point of this object is in the center. So it's placing the center onto the surface. That's why they're all like stuck inside of the original orb, right? So what if we wanted to move them away from this orb? Well, we could, the, the until now, we really, really could only move um, our points in a certain direction. For example, we can go point translate and we could translate all the points up on the z-axis, which is fine up here, but of course it's not very good down here, right? So this is no good. We want to move the points um, on the normal outwards. So this is no good. Um, so how do we do this? Well, we have to move the points, or first of all, we have to sort of calculate the new location. How do we do that? Well, we have to multi, we have to get the normal, first of all. So let's get the normal attribute, vector math. So let's get the normal in here. So you can have, you have a normal or vertex normal. Let me just take the normal. Let's add, um, the vector to it and then the result let's just call it P for position and then uh, we can translate oh first of all we have to set this to multiply by 1 P uh, and what do we want we want in attribute point translate to P all right and they're moving outwards because we're taking the normal. Now this is our factor here. We can uh, we can turn that down. So for example, something like this. And now they're sitting on the surface, right? Cool. So using this normal, uh, we can also do something else. Let me show you. Let's get rid of this and let's put in maybe a plane so we can see the rotation. Let's go back in here. Let's uh, take this plane like this. And you can see we have the plane on, uh, which is always aligned to the surface 
right? So it's still planes laying like this. And then we're moving it out on the normal of our surface this way. So this is what we get. But of course now also we can rotate around the normal. So we can give each of these uh, squares now a bit of a rotation. How can we do that? Well, we have to rotate the point and we have to rotate around the normal. So I need a little bit more space here. You know what? I'm going to do it after here. Okay, so here we're translating. Now let's rotate. We go point, rotate. We want to rotate axis angle object. The axis is an attribute, namely the normal. And then the angle is the rotation angle. Now look at it. So we're rotating around the normal, which is really cool. Awesome. I think I made a tutorial once about how to rotate objects around the normal using animation nodes. This is actually much easier. I think it involved loops and all sorts of calculations. So this is super easy. Now let me jump over to a different file and show you what I did. So this is my file. Maybe you've seen this. I posted it on Twitter and Instagram. I have a cloth simulation and then I put those sequins onto the cloth and I did that using that same exact method that I just showed you. So what do we have in our scene? Um, hold on, let's switch off the lights. So I have this uh, cloth object and if I switch off the Maybe make this a little wider, switch off the geometry nodes. You can see this is just a cloth object. It is quite high poly and I have those four points up here pinned. Then I just have this cloth simulation for 300 frames. So we can, you know, I have a, have a wind in here too. So this force field, which is blowing some air at the cloth. And then I have this cloth movement. Okay. So this, this is just a cloth, you know, just like any other cloth simulation. But what I did was um, on frame one here, where it is still like a perfect plane, I went into um, vertex paint mode. And then I created three vertex colors, a Chris, a P, and then this sort of hair feature from my logo, right? So Chris, and I took my logo and then I stenciled on into these three um, vertex colors, well, the parts of the logo. So Chris, then there's the P and then there's that thing, okay? And then I used those three different vertex colors in geometry nodes to place those sequins. So where are they? I have them over here, they're quite big. And I made three of them because I also made three different um, materials. Okay, so I have, let me just switch over to the shader editor. So I have a blue one because the Chris is blue in my logo. Then I have this orange one for the P. And then I have the gray one, which is turns out to be silver. And it's just metallic and anisotropic. And that's all it is. So wait, if I switch this to rendered, what do we get? Yeah, so they just look like this. And of course, since they have this uh, uh, geometry, they get very sparkly. When the light hits one of the surfaces, the geometry is not very nice, I can show you, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> it's actually pretty horrible. We have those n-gons, which are also like bent. Who cares, right? They're teeny tiny in the final render. Yeah, so those are just shiny objects. Let's switch this back to this. And then on the cloth sim, with all that uh, vertex paint, I have this geometry node, node tree on here. So if I go back to the modifier and I enable this guy, then we can see the logo on here. So I have um, some input values here for the distance and the scale. And then I have the this note group and I put it all into a note group so that I can use it three times for the three different uh, sequins. I have this note group. Let's check it out. Here we go. We have the geometry coming in. 
I have a point distribute. I used the Poisson disk so that I can uh, define how much overlap I want because when they are like sewn on, they always overlap a little. So I used that and I set the, the distance. I can actually set the distance from outside. And then I scale because my sequins are huge and I just want them to be little. Then we attribute randomize. And what I'm doing here is I'm randomizing the distance of the sequin from the cloth. And that's exactly what I just showed you. Uh, if you place the sequin right onto the cloth, the, it would be like inside, but we want it to be in front a little bit, which is fine. If you have just a plane, you can move it on the X axis, for example. But if you have a cloth that is even moving, you want this one to be on here and this one to be on here. So you want to move it on the normal and I'm randomizing the distance here uh, between 0 0.001 and 0 0.01 so that they're all uh, stacked a little and overlapping. They're actually intersecting, of course. So if we zoom in here, you can see that they are, uh, it doesn't even look that bad, but here, so they're intersecting because I mean, this is not physically correct. <laughs> it's not a physics simulation, but you can only, you only look at it from a distance, right? And then it gets really sparkly with all those um, surfaces and, and all that. So I'm random, also randomizing or creating another attribute, uh, randomized a float between zero and 180, and that's for the rotation. So I have a V rand for vector random and the R rand for the rotation. Then I'm using this to uh, place right to multiply the normal with my v rand and have a new v position just like what i showed you then we have translate to place the sequence there here we rotate the points uh, along or around the normal using the r rand and then we're just instancing the sequence and since this is a node group and i'm using this node group once for the chris once for the p once for the hair uh, part of the logo and here I'm using, what is this, distance, min. Um, so I can set this from uh, the outside and then I have the scale here. So 0 0.008 from the original size to make them really, really tiny. And then of course, when the cloth moves, um, since we're translating them along the normal on top of the cloth, they all move slightly. It's just very, you know, this is, although this is a very strong wind, but this is a big cloth simulation with heavy cloth. So it, it just moves ever so slightly, but that slight movement on top of the cloth surface just creates a lot of those sparkles when you render this using cycles. And then um, when you render this out, oh, what's up here? Oh, here. I also subdivided the surface. Let's just uh, talk about this quick. So if I put a subdivision surface modifier in here, right? I could put it in on top of or before the geometry nodes, which would uh, create more geometry on the cloth, which is unnecessary because it's high poly already. If I put it uh, underneath geometry nodes or after geometry nodes, then I would also subdivide the sequence because after geometry nodes, of course, sequence here are part of my original cloth geometry, right? So you can see here the original cloth goes through here and is part of the final geometry. And on top of that, we also add or join in all the sequence, the different three different colors. So I need to subdivide the cloth if I wanted to subdivide it inside of geometry nodes. And that's what I'm doing here. And of course I don't want it on the viewport. So there's this is viewport node and there is no switch node yet, which would be very uh, useful. A switch node where you can have a Boolean to switch between two values, either this one or that one, but we don't have that yet. I'm sure it'll come soon. So I took a map range node and tried that out and it worked. You can plug a Boolean into a value input here on the map range. And then you, the Boolean is sort of, is, is calculated to be either zero or one. So if is viewport is false, it's zero. And I want two subdivisions. 
right? Level of subdivisions. If a viewport is true, so it's one, then I want zero subdivisions. <laughs> I'm not even sure if this works, but well, I'm trying to make it work. So I hope we get a switch soon so that this is all easier. Okay, and then for the rendering, all you have to do is hit render. Let me just do that quick. Cool, and now uh, really the magic here happens in the compositor. So I'm using my startup script or startup file. Um, you can get it from Patreon, by the way. There's also a video here on the channel if you're interested. Chris P's feature packed startup file. And it has this uh, default compositor setup that looks really crazy, but I go through all of that in that video. And all I really do here is a sharpen, then I have a glare just to add a bit of glare. I also added another glare to make those like stars. Um, and then I also have this fake volume one over here and the fake volume two over here. But the cool thing here is that because of that slight movement of the cloth um, and all of those surfaces of all of those tiny little uh, sequins, the light of Oh, I also have a bunch of lights in the scene, like point lamps all over the place and some strategically placed lamps. Uh, but, but really, those are all just reflections of all of those lights. And since um, they're slightly moving, it's very sparkly. So let's just watch that video quick. This is already some cool stuff we can do with geometry nodes. And as you can see, it's growing like daily and they're just putting new stuff in. So thanks to the Blender developers. This is awesome. We now have normals as a default attribute. All right, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Crispy out.